I like to share stories. Can I share stories? Just being transparent. So let me use this as a as an opportunity to invite all of you to be with us tonight at the Mill Church in Pickens, South Carolina. Oh my God. God has been doing something in the spirit, man. <sighs> West, I'm sure you guys, and I've never been in the military, but played football and, and all that kind of stuff. But you guys in the military, you you packed a, a, a sack, a backpack, and put on full gear and went for jogs and runs and things like that in full dress out uniform, right? What did it feel like when that when you were able to get back to the barracks or whatever and just drop all that gear off? I'm telling y'all what, man been such a doggone weight this week. <clears throat> I didn't sleep last night a wink, man. We're going tonight to, uh, I've been invited in our worship team and uh, our intercessory team, we're going to take them too, has been invited tonight to go to uh, the Mill Church in Pickens. Um, and I'm trying to be cautious with live streaming because I don't want to but they're a church I'm very proud to say this that they're a church that maybe has not experienced or expressed the fullness of the spirit of God and but they're growing hungry for it see the Bible says in Joel in, my la in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And sometimes I think we get very confused about the way that heaven works because we think that heaven is just going to all of a sudden appear from the sky and just fall down as some kind of glory cloud upon man. But the truth is, is that the spirit of God is going to be poured out among all flesh. It has to be poured out from flesh so if we ever will see revival in our cities and in our counties and in our regions it will not happen because all of a sudden one day the clouds got dark and began to swirl and Jesus just sat down upon people it will be because you and I begin to embrace the fullness of the Spirit of God and we cleansed ourselves enough to get holy enough to let the fullness of God use us and be poured out through us to where we were broken and empty and cleansed vessels. And that's the way the Spirit of God will move about all flesh. So I preach you holiness and I preach you righteousness and I preach you order. Not because we want to be religious. Not because we want to be ritualistic, because we want to be holy. For the presence of God is holy. And he says, be holy as I am holy. And if you can maintain holy, I'll pour myself through you. But we got invited to come over tonight to, uh, to be a part of a prayer service, a worship service, a prayer and a worship service. About three months ago, two and a half months ago, they called me. And immediately, immediately on that phone call, God said, it'll be a night of healing in the prophetic. Now, this, this is not something that they are normally accustomed to. And our intercessory team has been praying about this thing for, I don't know, a month, month and a half or something like that. And then our worship team got in on this thing, and I think the presence and the Spirit of God has begun to work in our deeper in our worship team and they're giving themselves over to seeking him further and seeking him deeper and not only practicing the scene but they're preparing their heart to be worshipers so I know God is stirring something in the spirit because I didn't ask them to do it. I mean, they just began to seek God deeper for themselves. And that's how I know that there's a unified spirit in this thing that wants to do something through rejuvenate because, hey, God's speaking to me, but he's speaking to them too and through them and preparing them and encouraging them to arrive us at destiny appointments. And I believe tonight is one of them. 
And so I really encourage you to come and be with us because God spoke to me about a week and a half ago. And, and he said, he said, Jason, he said, healing and the prophetic will be byproducts of my presence. He said, I'm not sending, I'm not sending this ministry to go and put on a show. He said, I'm sending this ministry to impart my spirit. It moves well beyond just a church. He said, it becomes the spiritual influence over their cities. And so I believe that what we're going to be a part of tonight is way bigger than just somebody getting healed. It means somebody's getting healed for a long time. It means minds getting healed for a long time. It means a, a, a literally a, a spiritual awakening over a place that may, has had just honestly it's been a lot like Anderson where it's had a, a cloud over it where it's just kind of depressed and not walking in the fullness of who it is and God is going to use this place and use the spirit of this ministry to go and begin to spread the spirit of God throughout other counties and other places and something is awakening in our upstate. I'm just telling you right now, something's beginning to stir in our upstate. So I really, our worship team's going, they're leading. I'll be there. Our intercessory team is going. But here's what I need. I need some worshipers to go with us. I need some people that are willing to raise their hands when everybody else around them ain't raising their hands. And I need some people that are willing to jump a little bit when the people around them ain't jumping a little bit. And I need some people that are willing to begin to speak in a language that everybody else don't really understand. I need some people that will go with me, that will share and spread the spirit of the almighty God so that we can see something break out, man. It's a kingdom thing. It's not about rejuvenate. It's a kingdom thing. Come on. So I'm going to be honest with you, it's been an extremely stressful and pressure-filled week. I don't say that to, for sympathy or anything else. I say that because I know every time man, I feel distressed in my spirit, it ain't God that's distressing me. It's something that sees the advancements that we're making in the kingdom. And it's beginning to wage war in the spirit realm. And I'm not afraid of that. You can stress me and frustrate me and depress me all you want to, man. But we still coming to take over the territory that God has already established that we can have. I ain't afraid of no devil in hell. Hallelujah. That's why you don't need to be worried in your life. When you feel the pressure and the stress and you up all night and you can't sleep, it ain't God. It's the enemy trying to, and he's afraid. He's trying to wage war. God, my God. So listen, can I speak a blessing over rejuvenate? Listen. You got to know my heart to understand this because I promise you it ain't, it ain't about rejuvenate at all. But I believe in the principles of the kingdom. And we pray for influence. I pray and, and I have and our team prays regularly more or less the, the, the pattern of Jabez over our city and over our county. That God would enlarge our borders, that God would enlarge our influence, that God would protect our influence, that God would, would increase what we're what he sent us to do throughout this place and so we pray we pray we don't pray just for numbers we pray for spiritual growth we pray for spiritual shifting in this place man it ain't no good if we're 30 years from now and we've not seen the climate of our city change we have failed we can have a thousand people in our church ten thousand people in our church but if it has not shifted the spiritual climate of our city we have walked in and failed I ain't getting no help 
So we pray, we pray for influence. We pray that God would grant us open doors and God would grant us access. But God reminded me Thursday, laying right there. He said, Jason, he said, I need to show you and remind you really how I create increase in your life. And when he said, when he, he means this ministry, he's not just referring to me. It means that I need to show you how I create increase in your ministry. He told about something early. He said, you got to be a giver to be perfect in the kingdom, right? We can do all these things. We can preach all these messages. We can celebrate. We can praise. We can do it. But if we don't have a spirit of so, we can't reap. And we got a lot of places and a lot of leaders and a lot of preachers and a lot of ministries that don't understand that concept and they're praying and they're fasting and they're struggling and it's all in futility because they have not learned the concept of sowing into something that you might not get a benefit back from. God said, Jason, I have taken Rejuvenate and moved it outside of its own county. Walked it an hour down the road using it because it has a heart to spread the kingdom, to be kingdom. So I'm carrying it away to another field to sow seed. But while I'm carrying it away to sow seed in somebody else's field, I'm bringing somebody in the back door of your field to sow seed in yours. And so as you give in the spirit, I'm beginning to rain down on rejuvenate. And as you're willing to give, man, as you're willing to give, as you're willing to sow, as you're willing to give, I'm going to bring a harvest. A harvest to this house. A harvest to this city. Come on now. God messes things up. He says, I want you to go to another city to bring a harvest to yours. I want you to go to another county to bring a harvest to yours. And we so conflicted because we don't like to give to something that don't look like us. I'm preaching better than you're hollering. We don't like to give to something that don't look like us. We don't like to sow into something that don't have our structure and our DNA that don't look like our kind. We don't, we don't want to give to something that we don't see an immediate benefit from. You know what? This is where I'm going to bring in my scripture today, and I ain't going to preach, but I'm going to show you this. Go to Acts really quickly. Watch. I get it, Lord. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down. My God, y'all don't see what I'm seeing right now. I've been fighting for this thing, man. Ah, don't get worried. I'll get you out in just a second. Just, this goes along now with the way this thing is going. Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. Now watch. He, he looked at Philip and he said, I'm going to take you out of the land that you come from. I'm going to take you out of the land that right now has the ability to really grow because the kingdom is really just starting to get rooted. And man, there's a release in this place and people are getting hungry. And right at the time of fruitfulness, I'm going to take you out of it. And I'm going to send you to the desert. Watch this. I'm going to send you to a wasteland. Because I just want to know, will you show up even when it looks dry? Will you be consistent when the landscape is dreary? Will you go to another man's field and show up every day and sow seed? I'm trying. What? Come on, y'all ain't never felt like your life was on the road to nowhere. See, that's what he did to Philip. He said, it looks like everything is going great, but I'm about to take you on the road. It looks like it's going nowhere. And I need you to do something. I need you to show me something. In order for me to bring increase in your life, in order for me to bring increase through your life, you got to show me something. And you can't show me something where it seems like everything is going well and it seems like everything is going good. I got to carry you to a dry place. 
a land you can't even call your own. And then find out, will you just show up every day? Can you be consistent when you don't see the harvest? Can you be committed to another man's wasteland? Ain't nobody gonna help me. Philip, I need to know, will you just show up? Because see, what we don't see is if you go a little bit earlier in, in, in Acts and begin to read, he was there with all his brothers and they were having a great time. They had been in Jerusalem. They had been in Samaria. They were in all these places having a lot of fun and changing lives and all this stuff is just going great. And I'm kind of curious how many people God looked at and said, hey, I need you to go down the road to Gaza. And he looked at him and said, I can't go to another man's dry land. Philip went all by himself. All by himself. God says, I need to know, can you be committed in places that everybody else would have abandoned? Can you sow? My God, I'm tripping over everything. Y'all see the work of the enemy. <laughs> Can you be committed? Can you be consistent in the desert? Can you be committed in another man's field? And can you show up every single day? Whether you see anything working, whether you see anything moving, whether you see anything changing, whether you see anything sprouting, can you show up every single day at the place I've sent you to and just work that thing, man, and work that thing. And don't be worried about the harvest. Be worried about being a sower. He said something interesting. He said, he said the harvest is plenty. Watch, watch, y'all y'all messed up because y'all think that the laborers is about the harvest. No, 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 no. He said there's harvest guaranteed in the seed. I'm not looking for somebody to go gather the grain. I'm looking for somebody to plant it. My God. If you can just get the seed in the ground, it's bound to grow because it's got my spirit and it's got my influence and there's nothing about my word that will return void. So I'm not looking for somebody to gather the harvest. I'm looking for somebody that will plant when the ground's still dry. I'm looking for somebody that will sow and ain't nothing sprouting. And this is what's so interesting about this. Is that if you go and look at the translation of the word desert, Desert doesn't mean dry, and it gets called wasteland, but it's not how it's translated. Desert is translated as uncultivated. Now, I don't think everybody heard me. Desert means uncultivated. Watch, 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 watch. Everything in your life was desert at some point. Watch. Hmm. And you have what you have because somebody was a sower so that you could be a reaper. God says, if I can send you to another man's land to be a sower, I'll send people to your fields to be a reaper. My God, you won't have to worry about your increase. You won't have to stand there and look to see if it's budding or if it's blooming. You can go to another. I can walk you out of your land and your location and you not have to worry about whether there's increase in your house. You just need to worry about being a sower in another man's dry field. Watch. I'm going to finish right here. Watch. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charged all of her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning 
And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet, and then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near. My Lord. Go near and overtake. See, I feel like the word of the Lord has just come to rejuvenate about two and a half months ago and said, Go to a land, and then when you see the opportunity, go and overtake it. I got about half y'all in that. Y'all better worship better than that tonight. Watch. So what did Philip do? Now see, we, we'd have met. No, 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 that's dry land. That ain't worth my time. I need some water before I go there. I need you to show me how this is going to benefit me. I need you to show me how this is going to change my marriage before I give myself to it. I need, to show, I need you to show me how it's going to benefit my pocketbook before I give myself to it. I need to see that there's some kind of harvest before I'll ever commit to being consistent in a dry place in my life. I'm preaching better than y'all hollering this morning. Let me, look, I just, some of y'all need to be consistent in your dry places, that's all. You know what, you know the best thing we consistent about? Being inconsistent. Watch, cause when it ain't, don't seem to be working right in your home, uh, I'll just leave. And when it don't, don't work out the way you think it should at your church, uh, I'll just leave. Well, I, I don't really like all the effort that I'm having to put in this dry job. I'll just leave. I ain't, y'all. What you don't see is that God says every dry place of your life is not unfruitful, it's uncultivated. And so I have you there because I trusted you to dig the ground every day just to show up and dig the ground and spread and cast the seed, man. Every single day, just show up to that dry ground and dig and dig and dig. Because I'm not looking for a harvest. I'm looking for somewhere to sow seed. We got to be givers. We got to be givers. I can't be a taker. I can't be a consumer. I got to be an investor. If I want to see a return, I got to learn to invest. I got to learn to sow. I got to learn to give. Watch. Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? No, 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 watch, watch. Y'all got to see how this is working for us. We've been reading the Bible, but we don't understand all of what it means. I'm going to let y'all get that for a second. You'll catch up in a minute. See, there are a lot of places. Wait, wait, let me rephrase. There are a lot of churches that have been preaching the Bible, but they don't understand what it means. There are a lot of places that have been preparing to, pre to read the Bible, but they don't really understand what it means. And God has given a spirit of revelation on this house, my God. That we're going to run to as many men's land as we can go to. And we're going to sow seed after seed after seed after seed. And we ain't going to worry about what's going on here because God's going to take care of what's going on here. God's going to shift the city when we ain't looking just so he can look at us and say, See, I told you it wasn't about you anyway. It was always about me. It was always about me. Well, let me bring it right here. Uh -huh. He said, How? How can I, unless somebody guides me, and he asked Philip to come up and sit with him, go, go, go to 35. Philip opened his mouth, and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. And now as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, see, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? And then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He comm uh, commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down in the water, and he baptized him. This was so good. Jesus gave a great commission before he was transported out of this place. He said, go and be my witnesses and make disciples. Watch. Y'all hear me say this a lot. Don't make converts. Make committed, disciplined people. 
I ain't going to get no hand claps on that. We still in this halfway mind. I need some committed people to clap for that right now. Don't go and make converts. I'm not going to send you down the easy road. Go and make committed people. Go and make disciplined people. Go and make people that work themselves and show up to my word and show up to my appointments and show up to prayer with me and show up to worship with me that I can begin to work in their life and they let nothing get in the way of an appointment with me. They'll sow even when it's dry. God took Philip out of Jerusalem down a desert wasteland to reach a man who was in Jerusalem coming out. All because of something that Jesus commanded all of us to do. Go and make disciples to Judea. That's where he had been. I'm sorry. That's where he was. To Samaria, that's where he had been. And then he says, to the ends of the earth. Now watch. Come here, stand with me for a minute. If they can hear you through my microphone, tell everybody where you're originally from. I'm originally from Nigeria. What continent is that? Africa. Why do we need to be consistent and committed in sowing in dry lands? Because God sent us, a, sent us a harvest from a field that wasn't even ours. Why, 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 wait, wait, wait. You know why she stands here? Because Philip would go where everybody else abandoned. See, the road that God sent Philip on was the only road that would lead to Africa. And the nation of Africa or the continent of Africa would come to know Jesus Christ. All because Philip said, I won't abandon the responsibilities of my life. I'll give myself to a desert. I'll give myself to a dry land. All because the kingdom of God. You may think it's dry desert where you're at. But it's just an uncultivated pathway to a future of destiny for many more people than you can count. And that's why you got to go to your home and be good to your marriage every day. And it's why you got to go to your job and be consistent in your job even when you hate it. And it's why you got to come to church even when you don't feel like coming to church so that you can celebrate the one that makes it all possible for you. It's why you need to crawl into your prayer coffin at all hours of the morning and be consistent digging even when you don't think you hear from him. My God, do you hear what I'm saying? Because it ain't dry and it ain't dead it's just uncultivated it's just uncultivated God says I need some consistent people I need some people that will give themselves to the disciplines of my kingdom and according to my son's life he had to sow and be committed to a territory that always wasn't fun for him he says my people need to be long suffering they need to be persevering. You might get that. Because everywhere that you think is dry, you hold the seeds of life. You hold the seeds of life. Father, thank you, Father, for this seemingly wasteland, Father, that you have each of us in. Because I know that there are so many sitting in this room. They feel like the paths of their life have taken them nowhere. If they're honest, they probably come to church just because it's what they're supposed to do. But feeling like life can't get any better. I pray they take their eyes off of their current fields and begin to give of themselves consistently in the deserts that you have them in. That they sow seed every day, even when set, sweat begins to pour from their brow, and even when cuts and bruises, God, begin to reveal blood, Father, from beneath the skin, and even when there's brokenness and there's hurt and there's anguish, that they give themselves to consistently being committed 
to what looks like a wasteland. Father, for in those places are roads that lead to destiny for many people that have been awaiting a new life from you in Jesus' name. Bless this people. Bless this house in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, man, thank Pastor for that word one more time. As we get ready to go out, just think about in your own personal life, what deserts have God called me to? What seeds have God placed in my life that I need to sow? Because when we're talking about giving, don't get confused with just giving money. We're talking about giving gifts that God put into you when you were born. Because Jeremiah said, before you was in your mother's womb, I knew you. So he's already commanded gifts inside of each one of you. So we want to challenge everybody to go to that desert. Be Christ-like on your job. Be Christ-like in your friend circle. Be Christ-like at school. Be Christ-like when you're just out. Be Christ-like when you're at McDonald's and your order isn't correct. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> be Christ-like because that's living the life of God. And that might be that desert. Instead of you getting angry, you just saying, thank you, it's okay, people make mistakes. Jesus loves you. That could be that seed. So right now, before we leave, we just challenge everybody to sow whatever seeds you have. Because if the seeds are stuck in your pocket, they're never going to grow. They have to get into the ground. We have to sow them. So as you leave, just think about it this week. Sow all the seeds you can. God will, you know, start praying that God replenish your seeds. And he will replenish your seeds, okay? So be reminded if you're new time, a first-time guest, join us in the connection room. If you came up and got prayed for, um, if you gave your life to Christ, still join us in the connection room. We want to connect with you. And then today at 6.30 at the, at the Mill Church in Pickens, we need all our six, I'm sorry, six. We're going to show up 30 minutes late. All right, six o'clock. We need all our prayer warriors, all our worshipers. Just join and support the ministry because we are the ministry. It's not just pastor. We are part of the ministry. So if you're looking for seeds to sow, this is the opportunity to sow some seeds tonight. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a blessed week. You have been listening to the Rejuvenate Church broadcast. If you shared in today's service with us, visit us at www.rejuvenatechurch.com and send us a message. We would love to hear from you. Rejuvenate Church invites you to be our guest if you're in the upstate of South Carolina. We are located in Anderson, South Carolina, inside the Anderson Mall across from Books A Million. Our service times are Sundays at 10.45 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. For up-to-date information, visit our website or connect with us on social media. We are found on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Pastor Jason Wilson and Rejuvenate Church desire to bridge the gap that divides race, age, and economic status. We are transforming culture by engaging and shaping men and women through relationships and positive kingdom influences. Thank you for listening. We look forward to the opportunity to share with you again at Rejuvenate Church. <laughs>